Hello everyone, this is Harley from Garden FL and I just wanted to make this video because it is officially started to rain in Florida for the spring season of 2021. Now I'm actually so happy just because, you know, we've been in a drought here in Florida and actually some of the plants, especially at my farm, have really been thirsty, but, but my plants here in my house in Bradenton, you know, they've been really well, but I really like when it rains because you can actually notice such a big difference when it rains. For example, here is a Rolinia deliciosa tree. Now this Rolinia is actually a grafted tree and I actually planted it last year. So it's been in the ground roughly for about a year now and it's grown so much it almost literally like tripled and right here as you see the base the base overall to this relinia is pretty good overall i'm just excited because the tree is just growing really healthy it's branching really good and you know the spot it's in at my house you know when you walk down it just has a really good spot so in the future when it grows much bigger i think it'll look really cool to see the fruit kind of hanging right here and i'll just be able to pick it so if we move along right down here, so right over here is kind of the main section of my fruit forest. Now I see the main section just because in this area, you know, I can do as much as I want. I have as much liberty in this area just because, you know, it's kind of my area. The other areas, this house is technically my parents' house, but I still live with them. So, you know, I'm kind of limited on all the, on some tropicals and stuff that I can plant. So, but this area, you know, I can just go wild, which I have, you know, I've done, I planted so much. As you see right here is a Kent mango. This Kent mango is really beautiful just because as you know, it has little Kent mango fruits on it. And this Kent mango tree in particular, believe it or not, I planted it in the ground about last year as well. And it actually fruited very heavy for us last year. We got about six really big and heavy Kents. And to be honest, I actually need to thin this mango tree. So we'll actually probably do that today, to be honest. And these mangoes as well have grown a lot and I'm really looking forward to, you know, harvesting them. Kent mango is actually an old school uh, variety of mango. And they're usually known to be a more later season mango. So, you know, this is a mango that you typically harvest at the end of the season compared, you know, to earlier mango seasons and mid-mango varieties. So I actually planted this sugar apple here and I actually literally just planted a Lisa Atemoya in the same spot, but I actually removed the Lisa Atemoya to the front of my house, which actually we're going to see, you know, in this video just because to show you how it's growing. And the same idea with the Rolinia tree, I just want to, I just really want to be able to fruit uh, some sugar apples right here and, you know, and be able to cut them off. And, you know, I like the same ideas I have with a lot of my food forests is I like to have my fruits, you know, really readily available. But, you know, we'll see how long that lasts, you know, as the trees grow. But we're actually going to go right back here to the kind of back section of my my little area I have. Now, I actually have a red alarm tree right here, which I'm going to move the camera closer to. But I just want to show you kind of in proximity where this red alarm is. And I do have to cut this Mexican sunflower because this is another thing that I meant to cut today, but it, it was a storming. But essentially, I like to cut my Mexican sunflower before it starts raining just because this thing grows super fast. So we're going to cut that really soon. And also, I want to point out to you that this is actually a cecropia right here. And this is something I recently planted here just not too long ago. So I'm really looking forward to this cecropia to flower. It's actually already flowering right now and it looks like it's gonna push out a new leaf very shortly. So here is my red alama tree. Now this red alama tree is literally just huge. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this red alama uh, towers me. And I just wanna show you some leaves. As you see, like the beautiful new leaves of the red alama, I just see they're just growing really nice. And this is another tree that I'm just noticing every day like literally doubles in growth as uh, as it grows. And the reason I'm letting this red alama tree go so big, and as you see, even down here, this red alama tree is just growing. And like right down here, just even has more beautiful new growth. So I'm really looking forward to this red alama tree to grow overall. It literally, it's like 10 feet, 11 feet tall. You know, it towers me. As you saw back there when I was walking up to it, it was just so big. And going back here, um, I actually have a lot of other fruits. So continuing, I actually have a lot of other fruits as you see just all around here. I have some things that I recently just planted that I'm really looking forward to. Some of them being, for example, like different mangoes in certain areas. This is actually a dwarf Hawaiian mango. Now, although it's small, I know like, as you see, it's a small area, but it's a dwarf Hawaiian. So I'm gonna keep it dwarf. And you know, I just have different things here like Mexican sunflower I need to chop. For example, these papayas are actually getting really good size. This papaya variety is actually pretty good. And that's something that I'm really looking forward to uh, be harvesting with all this new rain coming is all these papaya varieties. Uh, right here is a zinc mango. Now zinc mango is actually known for being really good. I'm really happy that I planted right here just because I'm going to do the same thing uh, cutting with that can mango kind of leave it grow. I have a variety of different things all around here like sugar apples and pots. I really love sugar apples so I'll always keep those in pots. And something that I'm really looking forward to to eating this hopefully this year. So these bananas that I actually have back here are tall namwa and actually dwarf namwa. So these ones right all the way back here are actually my tall namwas. 
Now these tall nameless have actually grown so much. I'm so surprised. And it's just really cool to see how much literally they grow so fast here. Now if you give them water, the ones on my farm I literally planted and they kind of stayed the same size for a good few months just because, like I said, it's been in a drought there. But with the spring rains coming, like, I can't wait to go to my farm just to do a video because it's going to be raining. Actually, it should be raining right now at my farm. I just rained here in Bradenton and just stopped. So I was like, okay, let's do a video to see how much things have grown. And you do notice things grow if you're in the garden every day like I am. You know, you just, you look at certain things and you're just like, oh, you know, you, you notice what grows. Anyways, this is a tall enamel banana. These are actually starting to sell out their little pups. Like as you see right here, this is actually a little tiny pup right here growing. And I'm actually planning to plant um, a praying hands banana in between these two because I want to do like a walls of bananas. I don't want to do, well, it's not that I, want, I don't want to do, it's just in this area, I really can't. It's, it makes more sense to do a wall of bananas because this RV actually, we're moving out within a few months. We're going to take this RV out. I don't know if it's going to my farm. I don't know where it's going to go, but we're gonna use this space. I want to use this space actually to put more mangoes and you know, whatever, um, another fruit tree. Uh, but anyways, I'm really looking forward to these tall name moss to grow. Now I did actually plant some really cool things in here. Like uh, this is a, actually an M4 mango right here that I'm really looking forward to. It's just, it's in a small kind of tight spot, but um, you know, nonetheless, I know it will grow. And this, I forgot what this mango was, but it's a Zill variety mango. And I lost a tag. I got it from Leaf in West Palm Beach. So we'll see. And I actually planted a bunch of other things recently, like a small abu seedling, which you cannot see because it's literally so small, it's a seedling. And then, um, you know, we have a bunch of things that are growing right here. I actually planted a mountain soursaw back here, which is super small, but I'll show you regardless. So going back here, I actually have a mix of different anonas. Like, as you see right here, I have a sugar apple, and then this is a reticulata, which is uh, now just growing. Um, now I did plant a mountain soursaw right back here. And this mountain star I've actually brought back from my farm. Although it's small, it's growing. It'll grow nice here. I planted some things like Mexican sunflower. This is kind of like a little area. This area gets a lot of sun, but it doesn't get like the morning sun. It gets more strong afternoon sun. So things back here grow a little slower in this back area. But this area kind of right here is where it gets really hot sun. And uh, let's move to the more front of the yard where I want to show you guys kind of how the things are. I want to show you kind of how things are growing now that we've got this rain because it looks really good. And something I want to share with everyone is that I've, I've, I've actually been harvesting these uh, papayas all month now and then all of past month too. So these papayas are really good actually. I don't know what variety this is. And I planted these papayas like last year. So these papayas have all turned around super fast, you know? You know, and even from seed, they're really fast to grow. And I really just like to be able to harvest them. And you know, like I said, these actually will have to turn yellow and you can actually eat them green too, but I actually like to eat them yellow and make a good smoothie with them with miracle fruit and lime. So anyways, we'll eat this in a few days. This is something I'm really looking forward to fruiting and flower is my passion fruit vine. Now this passion fruit vine I have growing here, it started right there on the fence, but it's going crazy over here. And I'm really looking forward to this one just because of the, oh my God, and I already have fruit. Oh my god, I did not even notice this fruit. Oh my god. I swear I've been watching this passion fruit vine like the past few months and just now I realized I have my first this is my first passion fruit vine. Now let me tell you a quick story. All the passion fruit vines that I had before always either I plant it in a spot where it always gets eaten or I always have to move it just because it's in an inconvenient spot here. So this is the first time and I've been trying to grow passion fruit for like two years now, but this is the first time that I actually have grown it. Oh my god and i think the only reason why i can see it has fruit is because you know it rained and so it, the leaves are kind of heavy with the rainwater. so i'm going to show you that one as you see right there is the passion fruit oh my god i can't wait and it's so cool that i see it right now because like like i said that's the first one i saw and just to kind of show you guys how far this vine extends as you see it starts here and you you kind of go all the way down here and this is a sour stop that is going on. But if you didn't know passion fruit vines, most of these will be eaten up by the caterpillars anyway. So they're actually really beneficial to have here, just as a butterfly attractor. And not only that, but um, you know, they make a great tasty fruit that you can just eat. So overall, like I said, I'm really happy to be able to see that passion fruit. So now that we're here, I wanna show you guys this coconut tree that I planted last year too. And this coconut tree has doubled on us. This is actually a dwarf yellow Malayan coconut. And so something that I realized is that, oh, obviously 
Coconuts need a good source of irrigation. They don't need, because on my farm, as you know, I do have coconut palms, but they're not irrigated like these. You know, this one actually gets a good hand watering mostly, um, you know, every week by me, a few times every week. So this coconut palm is just beautiful, but I'm excited because, you know, this is what most of my palms will look like at my farm, hopefully within two to three years, once we get a few cycles of that spring, uh, you know, rain and kind of a heavy rainfall to so really get those roots established. You know, but overall, I really love this coconut palm. I love coconuts. And, you know, just to have a coconut palm here, my parents only let me have one here. That's why my farm went crazy and I got like, I don't even know how much coconut palms I have on my farm. I have at least like 30, 40, 50. And, um, but you know, We'll see, we'll see how this one does in the future. I think it should fruit within uh, three to four years. So here's an area I think that some of you guys might want to update on. And this is actually my Anona seedling sections. Now all my Anona seedlings here, mostly they're a mixture of basically cherimoya and sugar apples. Now I'll just show you for example, um, let me put this papaya down. But let me show you for example how, I, how you can easily distinguish uh, sugar apple versus cherimoya. Now, for example, this right here is a cherry moya seedling, and this right here is a sugar apple seedling. Now, the way you could easily tell uh, the seedlings apart is just because cherry moyas are known for their kind of rounder leaves. And as you see, this seedling, you can easily distinguish the rounder leaves. So this would be a cherry moya seedling because uh, look how round that seed, those leaves look. They literally look like a circle. Uh, compared to the sugar apple seedling which is right here and the sugar apple seedlings always have very kind of slender and pointy leaves as you see here's a quick comparative of the two now the root compatibility of uh, root stock compatibility in florida from what i've heard you know sugar apple works just as good as cherry moya but there's a few things just because cherry moya does have its better colder tolerance than uh, uh, than sugar apple so that's why a lot of people like to graft on cherry moya it's kind of like the meta kind of the standard here but you know, I've heard that from a lot of people in California, and I've heard some people here in Florida say, in Florida, the best root stocks is Anona reticulata, um, Anona montana, uh, pond apple, or um, you know, or sugar apple. So now I heard that from someone at Fruitscapes actually told me that you know to choose all those root stocks over cherimoya. But you know, I, I do have uh, at the mojas here at my house grafted on cherimoya and uh, different things like pineapple and they all work great so but i am growing both varieties just to see kind of what works best in the future so i really have to take a little bit better care of these uh known as what i really have to do is just repot them all you know put them in, in other pots because some of them are actually not even separated exactly some of them are just you know all combined into one big pot but you know basically all this right here are just different known as so i actually want to take you to you know this front portion of my yard which looks really good right now so this front section of the house i really like because recently i just put some fruit trees that i think look really good and i did remove some things like some flowers that i did have permission to to remove from my mom that i rather you know plant food over but overall it's looking really good now that now that it's raining and everything is connecting now i actually did bring things over from my farm actually here such as a long gun so as you see this is the front area of my house and i did plant a few things here recently this actually right here is a gefna at the now this gefna at the i planted about a couple of days ago and i'm really excited for this gefna because number one it has a really good spot here in my yard and number two it just will be able to grow really good and I, I'm really looking forward to maintaining this one, you know, the canopy and everything. Now, right over here to the left of it is actually a cherry lotta. Now, this cherry lotta has actually grown so much. The cherry lotta tree is actually right now currently loaded with cherry lotta flowers all over. And to be honest, this cherry lotta probably has around four times the amount of flowers that it did last year. And it's been in the ground about, it's been in the ground about a year now, you know, so I'm really looking forward to how this cherry lotta tree overall will develop. If you didn't know, cherry lotta is actually a hybrid of uh, cherimoya and of uh, anona reticulata so they're both really cold hardy genetics so this tree actually did the best out of all my known is here in florida they're kind of like at the moya as far as uh, being able to handle uh, cold hardiness and they actually might be better so i actually have an orange sugar mango tree right here which is actually doing pretty good as far as growing wise it actually grew really nice I, you know i've been tipping it really good this season but it actually got something i'm not sure what it's called but i do believe i need the copper fungicide 
uh, and able to treat it because it has like this black stuff all over the, the base of the tree. So this orange sherbet we do need to treat with whatever that is. But something that I recently planted too was is right here. And this is actually a mamey sapote. And this mamey sapote is actually pushing out a brand new growth all over. And this one's actually a dwarf mamey, dwarf mamey sapote. I believe the variety is pumpkin pie. And I actually got this one from Leaf in West Palm Beach. I believe it's a newer variety of mamey. I'm not too sure of that, but all I know is it has really good tasting fruits and it's a dwarf mamey sapote. So when I bought this thing, it was loaded in flowers and I'm sure that once we get some more heat and sun and, uh, and rain here, uh, it's gonna start loading up with flowers and it's starting to rain again. So let's get to the tour. So this is a fruit tree that I actually brought from my farm here to uh, Bradenton, Florida. And this is actually a BQ longan tree. Now I love longans a little more than I like lychees, although both lychees and longans are really good. But if you guys didn't know, longans actually grow super good here in uh, Florida, in central to southern Florida, I believe. And this BQ longan actually grows really good too because I believe this tree needs a certain amount of chill hours. But as you see, this BQ is already flowering for us. And I'm just really happy to be growing it here too because at my farm, you can notice that the leaves, you know, they're really dry and you could tell that the leaves were not as plump because they really needed water. And you know, once I brought it here and I, I planted it and I gave it some good water and actually seeing it today because we had a rainstorm earlier, the leaves literally made a complete 180. They look so much more plump. The flowers actually, I actually see like a one blooming right here. But before, you know, it was on my when it was on my farm, the flowers were really struggling. It was taking so much energy. And because over there, it was literally like in drought. So I'm just super happy to see this uh, BQ Longan uh, growing here really nice. This is another tree that has a really good spot in my yard. And I do, I'm look really looking forward to, uh, you know, the fruits and you're just seeing it grow overall. So this is actually my jackfruit tree. Now my jackfruit tree, believe it or not, has another male flower forming. Now this one actually had a male flower about two weeks ago that actually fell off. And I was super surprised because the male jackfruit flower actually smells really good. It's like, smells like really bubblegum, bubblegummy and mango-y, almost like uh, exactly kind of how a ripe fruit smells like when you cut it open. And this jackfruit tree probably stands about eight to nine feet tall. It's really tall, it has a really good spot in my yard. And overall, this one will grow more taller than it, than it will wider because you see kind of right here, we have uh, the long gone cells right here. And you know, here's a jackfruit. So I, they are gonna be growing both of the trees really tall. And overall, I think we're gonna have to do something where I trim both trees. So like I have, there's still enough walkway, but I do think that, um, you know, this tree will look really good overall. And I'm really looking forward to the fact that it already has flowers for us. So I think that within a year or two, we should start seeing the female flowers because if you didn't know jackfruits, the female flower is actually what produces fruit, not the male flower. But um, I do like this jackfruit. It's an unknown variety from seed. So, you know, we will see, we will see how this jackfruit is for us. So actually beside the jackfruit, we actually have a uh, koala longan. Now this koala longan, I'm really looking forward to because out of all longans, I've heard that koala is a really good variety. I've heard people actually yank out uh, BQ longans from the yard just to plant koala. Uh, I've heard that it has a big meat to seed ratio as, a, as in small seed, big meat. And uh, this is what I'm really looking forward to. Right over here is something I recently planted as well, which is the Lisa at the Moja. As you see, we're actually pouring a little harder now in rain, so we're gonna have to end the video soon. But this Lisa at the Moja, I'm really looking forward to growing right here too. And something too that I wanna show you guys where they are as far as proximity is my uh, Pepak Chong at the Mojas, which are actually right here. Here's one Pepak Chong at the Moja, and another one is uh, right here. So uh, yeah, those are two trees that I'm really looking forward to. Oh, this is another one that I'm really looking forward to, and this is a raw honey mango. I believe this is a mango from Myanmar. I'm not too sure, but I really like the fact that this one is growing right here, has a really good spot. So it's raining really hard, guys. We're gonna have to end this video here. And uh, you know, I hope you guys like this video. Like I said, I can't wait to make more updates in the future when it's raining more. And yeah, guys, that's it. Thank you guys. This is Harley from Garden NFL, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye now.